Jordan, you know, I just spec the GT3 RS out today, and that had a lot of back and forth with uh, with Zuckerman and Jerry and my other, hey, what should we do here? So I took our ideas to Mr. Pruniger, oh. Andreas Pruniger, uh-huh. the designer of the car, and he said, here, here's what you want. And he, he saw an angle that we weren't seeing, and I went, wow. That, str- an aesthetic <clears throat> angle. He said, I said, here's what we're all thinking for this car. What do you think? And he said, this is the one, but this is how you're going to do it. And I don't want to announce it yet. And I went, wow, that that's why you're Andy Pruniger. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Butcher Box. Know what I love? Meat. I love meat. We had a barbecue for my birthday this past weekend, and boom, meat was served. I got a new smoker, one of those pellet smokers, so I am testing it with all different kinds of meat. We're doing beef, I did turkey for Thanksgiving, doing salmon, Uh, actually the salmon was excellent, and Butcher Box is here to take the guesswork out of finding high quality meat and seafood that you can trust. The beef is 100% grass fed. The chicken Free range, organic, the pork is crate free, and the seafood is wild caught. It's all humanely raised with no antibiotics or added hormones. And with Butcher Box, you get just what you want delivered right to your doorstep. They've got free shipping for the continental U.S. and no surprise fees. You can choose from a variety of box plan options from curated to customized and change your plan whenever you want. You can enjoy a range of high-quality cuts that are hard to come by at the grocery store at an amazing value. And with exclusive member deals, you can save big on your favorite cuts. I loved the Thanksgiving turkey I made. I used the smoker, and it was so great. The turkey was so good. I got that butcher box turkey that they were doing for Thanksgiving, and it was excellent. Love sending butcher box gifts to my friends and family. And it, if you've ever been the kind of person who's gotten a box of meat in the mail, trust me, it is a very rewarding experience. It's convenient, it's affordable, and the taste is delicious. This holiday season is made better and tastier with Butcher Box. For a limited time, they're offering our listeners ground beef for life and ten dollars off your first order. So sign up today at butcherbox.com slash tire. And then use code TIRE to get $10 off your first box and ground beef for the life of your membership. That's butcherbox.com slash TIRE with code TIRE to claim this deal. We're also brought to you in part today by Athletic Greens. Love Athletic Greens. It's good for you. You got to make sure that you got your gut health taken care of with energy, optimized immune system, and vitamins. And it's Athletic Greens AG1. I drink it every day. It is delicious. Doesn't taste like some disgusting, weird, grassy, greenery thing. It's got like a tropical taste. It's pretty good. Chug it down in a scoop of water, one scoop, boom, and I'm absorbing 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. I'm not really sure what an adaptogen is, but I could probably put it together. It's a gin that helps me adapt. Starts my day right. I do it before my morning coffee. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of these things. Super important. I do it first thing in the morning. Get it down nice and quick. Before I brush my teeth, before I have my coffee, it gets me going. And it helps me with that energy and digestion throughout the day. I love this stuff. It's affordable, less than three bucks a day, especially when you're investing in your health. That is important, right? Right. And it's a climate neutral certified company. That's good. They've donated over 1.2 million meals to kids in the year 2020. That's good. And with every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. To make it super easy, reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. With AG1, it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. 
No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel pra- packs Packs. Five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash tire. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash tire to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Also brought to you in part by HelloFresh. Love HelloFresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I love HelloFresh. They've sent me so much food. Me and Hannah really, really like this stuff because I love cooking and I'm pretty good at cooking, but what I'm not at is variety. I get stuck in habits. Right? There's like 10 recipes I can make without looking at a recipe book. Right, I just stop at the store on the way home. I get the same things. I rotate through them, and they're good. But it's not great variety, and I love variety. That's why HelloFresh is awesome. They've got 35 recipes to choose from each week, so there's something to please everyone. You can choose from family-friendly, fit and wholesome, or even veggie. Plus, you can customize your meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding proteins to a veggie meal. They send you the exact right amount of ingredients. I love that. You're not wasting food. If you say you want meals for two, they send you exactly meals for two, the exact right amount of spices, the exact amount of sauces. It's awesome. You're not letting food go bad in the fridge. You're not throwing food away. You're not buying more than you need. It is great. Whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at HelloFresh's Market. They've got quick breakfasts, charcuterie boards, desserts. It's never been easier to prep for a party or fill your pantry. And if you're traveling over the holidays, HelloFresh has plans that work with your schedule. You can change your preferences, your delivery day, your address, or pause your shipments in just a few hours clicks. It's all super easy. The food is fresh. It all takes 30 to 45 minutes. Easy to clean up. Minimal food waste. No food waste, really, unless you don't finish your dinner. But it's great. I really like it. So you go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire18 and then use code SmokingTire18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Right? HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire18 Code smoking tire 18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. It's all good. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, baby. Do it. All right, kids, my pal Spike Ferriston is in studio today. We are talking about the demise of Bill's, the Malibu kitchen. The landlords finally won, and Bill's has to shut down our favorite restaurant in L.A. It is very sad and depressing. We're also talking about Porsche, as it were, Spike's new GT cars purchases, the Plan Z effect, as it were. We talk about old Land Rovers, and we answer questions from the Patreon. Everyone seems to want to know how Spike spends his money. It's Spike Ferriston, the host of Spike's Car Radio, on today's episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast. It is a sad week for us. It is. Right? I went to Bill's for a sandwich today. Did you yeah. take any memorabilia yet? No. Are you gonna? Uh, well, I've eaten a lot of his food, and I'm sure the effects of that food are in my body. That is, s- that's the memorabilia <laughs> I will have. I took uh, early aging, gut, uh, unhealthy gut. <laughs> I would say I left some memorabilia in the toilet earlier today. No, I took the, that's the uh, I took the we don't have a bathroom sign. Oh, well, that's pretty good. It's <laughs> a good one. You know, I can't get a fix on what's going on with the Malibu Kitchen. You know, I know he's closing at that location, but yeah. but then he said, in fact, he said he was uh, uh, opening somewhere else soon. Well, he, so he had hoped. The, yeah, well, the, the Wait, word... I have a statement from him. Would you like to hear the statement? Oh, the official texted this was, statement? This was a texted statement. Okay, what's the statement? For the Spikes Car Radio listeners, and and we, we share the same listeners. Yeah. The outpouring of shock, sadness, love and support about this store closing has been incredibly heartwarming and overwhelming. Please thank your listeners and the TST listeners. Let them know I'm not retiring. So he's not retiring. No, that we knew. This is words. 
Uh, the landlord exercised his right not to renew our lease. More to that story. We're working on opening in the new shopping center. Yeah. But for now, everyone come down on the December 4th and yeah. have a cup of coffee, which is this Sunday. Yeah, I will be there. Yeah. What uh, what he told me today is 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 there is this new shopping center yes. going around the corner. Correct. It's on the same, the east side of PCH. It's basically where the farmer's market yes. has been. And there's an opportunity to <clears throat> move over there. There's and a it place. Opens. It's not like soon. It's not like, it's not like he's going to... Put the fucking so he bagels has, in a cart and wheel them across the street. He has to survive how many years? I mean, it's probably, I, I drove by there. It's probably like a year or a, a year, year and a half. Yeah, wow, that's that's not bad. But he said he's talking to some people about doing mail order baked goods. Yes. He's got a good social media following. He does. So I, I, I could think of a few people that would buy cookies. The cookie I've been talking to him about all of this. Yeah. Okay. Mail order pies. Well, it's not. First of all, just the fact that he's using the phrase "mail order" is just shows you my issue with Bill, who I love. But Bill, maybe you'll listen to me when I'm on this podcast and not there. There's a great bakery in, in Brentwood where I live, yeah, uh, called Clark Street Bakery. Little little tiny shop, almost as big as this studio right here, and they sell great food like yeah. Bill does, right? But I I order it on this thing right here, yeah, yeah. and it's either delivered to my house or it's ready for me when I get there, and Bill has the hardest part of that. He has delicious. He has such a talent for baking things. Yeah. The pies I got for Thanksgiving, fuck, they're me. unreal, right? They're so good. Everything's so great. Good. And then he brings in the bagels. Whatever. If he just sold that stuff and had someone figure yeah. out this piece of it, his business would quadruple. Yeah. But in fairness, I I use the phrase mail order. I don't think he <laughs> used that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about selling the shit online yes. through a business whose job it is to sell this shit Again, online. Again, yeah, online, yeah. Whatever. mail order. <laughs> Whatever. It's apps I mean, that it's quick and you want it delivered and you just want it yeah. you want it picked up. Yeah, you, right? the idea being you can get some of the food until he sorts out the- I said to him, I go, look, he, that's the idea. I just laid out the business for you. Yeah. You call your friend Phil Rosenthal, Phil who loves food, whatever his Netflix show is. I love food by Phil. He, oh, is that somebody feed Phil? Is that him? Yeah, that's Phil. Oh. He's got the business know-how to, to put this together. And I can even I even know the people who own that bakery. I can hook you up with the tech side of it. And you have the heart and you have the recipes. I think I met is is, he, just, Ro, is it, that Rosenthal also Rosenthal wines? Same Rosenthal? I, I don't know. He's Everybody Loves Raymond, I think. That okay. was, he was the showrunner to that show. Oh. And now yeah. he's doing this show. And now he's like, I created he's, a sitcom, and now I'm going to eat on TV. It's good. Yeah, it's a good side step. It's great. I like that. It's kind of yeah, like yeah, what yeah. I did with cars. It makes yeah. the, it makes perfect sense to me what he's doing. Yeah. he got tired of entertainment, and he, he he's Those playing. These guys on, who eat on TV, they look like they're having fun. <laughs> it's uh, it's amazing how many eating shows there are on TV, and it just yeah. shows you we're all a bunch of bears who yeah. like to. Well, we're not eating. We like to watch people eating. Yeah, we're making meals. Yeah, or yeah, learn figure weird. out where to eat. Yes, Where but Phil, yeah. now that I laid out, I said, here you go, Bill, a few weeks ago. There's the idea. Get Phil, uh, get your recipes together, uh, and and make this happen. Yeah. And you're going to be a very wealthy man. Yeah. And nothing has happened Doable. since that moment. So, well, he'll be, when he doesn't have to go to the store every day starting next week. I, I would like maybe. the Lambretta. That's what I would like oh, yeah. that's sitting there. Yeah. But that belongs to Jerry, and I think he wants he it back. He probably <laughs> wants it back. I took a laminated sign that says, no, you can't take a yeah. dump here. No. Which is about all I'm going to get. I, I don't know. But we will be there Sunday. Yeah. Jay is coming. I talked to Jay the other day. How's he's he feeling? Come by. He's, he's, he's great. He's feeling good? Yeah. I called him that day. Um, Jerry had just got off the phone with him, and, of course, all the listeners were like, what happened to Jay? And I'm like, I don't yeah. know. What are you talking about? Saw the news and called him. He sounded great. He was in great spirits then, and... When I chatted with him a few days ago, the same Jay. He goes, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to perform tonight. Yeah. So, apparently, uh, you know. he sideswiped a cop's car with his <laughs> in the front of the comedy and magic. Yeah, cop. I saw I, that. I, I yeah. don't know. I, I didn't talk to Jay, but it was on TMZ. It was. Shit. It was just a little wheel kiss, yeah. I think. But um, I, I, I watched that, too, and I was thinking how many times I've seen people like Jay and uh, once Jerry in his 9083 <laughs> at uh, Laguna Seca at the racetrack at yeah. the Historics, surrounded by 200 people, and he's got to back that thing up oh. and drive it onto the track. Yeah. How hard and how stressful that little moment Remember, is. Like when Jay showed up at, at Bill's and he's got some like 1928 <laughs> yeah. Lagonda yeah, Le Mans yeah. car with about eight degrees of steering. 
and he's and, got to like parallel and park as he this thing. comes in everybody crowds around yeah. and all the phones come up and yeah. you know everybody you kind of get used to that pressure, pressure. But those guys operated a huge, uh, different level of pressure. And I was watching that thing at the, uh, the, the, the uh, what is that, the, the Hermosa Beach Comedy Cal- Magic yeah. Club? Is that where it is? Comedy Magic, yeah, Club, yeah. yeah. Um, and he was, surra- he, again, he was surrounded by a ton of people, and he's in a car, and he's just got out of the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't envy those backing ups and pulling into spots. Dude, and- Zach and I were sitting at uh, the Calabasas uh Commons or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. where Polachek is. The fancy mall. The fan- Polachek. Polachek. Yeah. The yeah. fancy mall over there. And we're eating a fucking, s- eating some lunch there. And we saw a Tesla straight smash into a Prius, parked Prius. Wow. And then just back up and drive away. Yeah, yeah. And the Prius, the bumper of the Prius was fucked yeah. up. It was like yeah. crashing. And we didn't, for the audience listening, I can hear you already. We didn't have time to pull out our phone because the, the Tesla backed up. And I thought like, oh, they're going to get out. Yeah, and yeah. Try to look around for the owner, and they just dipped. They were they gone. Were, they were gone real yeah. quick. So I was picking up my son from school yesterday, and I said, hey, "Yeah, meet me in the Gelson's, which is a supermarket, right?" And there's a there's a, a Subaru parked in the space to the left of me, but sideways. Ugh. Like if the, if it goes into reverse, it's going right into my yeah. Defender door. And there's nobody in the car, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, oh, i got to get something for dinner, too, for these rat kids, because my wife is uh, not, not not home. So I go inside, I come out. There's a, a crazy lady in the car. I Uh-oh. noticed then the handicap sticker, and then I noticed every panel of her Subaru is dented <laughs> and ruined. And I go, oh, hold on. And she's backing directly oh, into no. my door, and I stop her. And I go, what, what are you doing? And she goes doesn't say anything i go turn your wheel the other way and then she turns it completely the opposite way and almost takes the front of her car in i knew if i hadn't have been there she would have done exactly what you're saying i said roll your window down i'm gonna do this for you (laughs) she's like thank you so much young man i go i'm old Uh, that's how nuts you you are i really shouldn't be on the road i shouldn't be driving here And I'm holding the wheel, and I'm like, back up, and she's in forward. It was hilarious, and she was, and she said, thank you so much for doing that. And in my head, I'm going, what do you do every <laughs> other errand when I'm not there? Yeah. You're just the just, Prius lady. Just smashing into stuff. See, I thought you were going to head right into a Tesla full self-driving no, 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 thing no, this, that. There, no, there was a human responsible for this. Yeah, this has nothing yeah. to do with any of that. Mm-hmm. This was a human driving into a parked yeah, car it's and, an, then, unfortunately and then common. dipping. Very common. And a guy, oh, yeah, the waiter <laughs> comes out. And he's like, something happened because we're all looking, and, and we go, oh, here's what happened. And he goes, every day. And it walks <laughs> inside. This, now, see, get it, now, let me relate this to Bill. As, as much as I love Bill and the Malibu Kitchen, as much as I love them, that location, I'm done with it. I'm done. As you know, yeah. I, I can't enjoy tourists opening their doors into my cars anymore. Yeah. And I don't and I don't enjoy it. There's one spot off to the side that if it's open, I can keep a car there and I don't have the to worry. The spot against the rail. No, no. Uh, the spot over across the, leading into the other parking oh, lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah. park like this. Here's yeah. Bill's right yeah, there. Yeah. That spot the right single, there yeah, the is single. a single spot. The bush. You got a little bush barrier other, there. Otherwise, you're watching... <laughs> You just, I watch these people come in. It just, yeah. they pull, like piling at 50 miles an hour. They open their doors into your car. Yeah. It it's a pretty narrow nuts. turn angle for today's yeah. monster and SUVs. The, and last time I was there, I was in one of Jerry's cars. It was a very expensive car. And this lady pulls in with dogs and then proceeds to open both doors oh, no. full and leave them there and then just sit checking her phone as the doors go and like oh, <laughs> it's God. getting close. And Jerry's just laughing at it, but it's bugging me. I, I hope this new spot that Bill finds. Spacious. Gets, Why get, lanes? Yeah, it gets rid of it. I, I, can't, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Today I'm driving up there and I'm in that Ferrari 296 that's parked yes, outside. I is, saw that. Quite nice Mo- in most ways. Mm-hmm. There's some issues, but it's quite nice. And I'm just cruising up PCH. I'm not doing anything. It's just just a nice little cruise today. Today's my birthday, so I'm a little relaxed. Happy birthday! Fucking chilling, enjoying a sandwich. May I ask? And Forty-one. Forty-one. That's why I got the OP forty-one. Ah, in yellow. Wow. Forty-one around the sun. So that's the representative of the. Very blah, nice. Blah, blah. Anyway, congratulations. I'm driving up, and there's a there's a Nissan Versa, fucking we over maneuvering <laughs> like crazy yes. behind me. 
and the whole front of the car is smashed in. Like, this dude has rear-ended someone at speed. Yes. And I'm watching, and I'm going, oh, boy. Don't don't have a red light happen where this guy is going to be approaching me from mm-hmm. behind because it's going to go badly. Yeah. And fortunately, that did happen, but he weaved into the left lane at the last minute to dive bomb a spot and it averted panic from me. And again, he gave me the thumbs up. Yeah. But I was expecting to be rear-ended by someone who clearly has already rear-ended somebody. <laughs> you know I had the Defender taken out. Did I ever tell you this story? Going you got hit? On the 405. Really? At speed, 60 miles an hour. No way. Yeah. It looks pretty good for a salvage. It's already back. No, it should It should have been. I was hoping. I was like, figure, oh, this would be good. I'd get a new car. I was uh, uh, leaving the 405 going on to the 10 to go down to the studio, and somebody, I don't, you know, it's the same thing Zuckerman says, but it's absolutely true. I had, didn't see anybody coming. Had both hands on the wheel listening to Howard Stern. And then the whole truck went up on three wheels. Oh, <laughs> shit. Somebody just... Uh, NASCAR bumped me. Oh, you got pit maneuvered. Na- no, no, not even pit. If I had been pit, I was rolling. I oh. was rolling for sure because I'm, I'm 60 miles an hour. This was a side-by-side oh, wow. little uh, mid-size uh, Mercedes SUV. Boom! Bang! Wow. I go up. I correct. I come down. I look in the mirror. I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I look and I see this car go, oh. <laughs> off to the side of the road. And now I have to go on to the 10 and do a full loop and come back to Wilshire oh. and come all the way back down. Of course, you know, predictably, the person is not there. Oh. I don't know how he drove away because the truck, my truck was fine. And oh. every panel on the right side and the wheels are oh. all oh, I'm glad you're okay. Up. That could have been sketchy as hell. Yeah. You've seen the Defender video. Of where it the, rolls. Where it rolls. Oh, yeah. It was that. It, it would have been that. It would have <laughs> yeah, been that for bad. sure. That video is bad. Yeah, that's yeah. bad. Crazy. But here it is. I drove it here you today. You drove it here. It's and alive. And it only makes a few weird sounds that it never made before. <laughs> a couple extra squeaks and rattles in there. Yeah, squinchies and rubber balloon noises <laughs> that I'll be using for Hopefully the next. Hopefully the body shop didn't, like, leave a screwdriver in there somewhere. Uh, no, but it, Anthony Lehner did it, you know, my oh, friend yeah. Anthony, uh, because the insurance company said, you've got a six-month wait at least for parts, the uh, pandemic, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I called up Anthony, he goes, I'm connected, I'm hooked up, and he got the parts in a week. Oh, cool. And did all the work. Oh, imagine and, six months waiting on a fucking body work, that would suck. Maybe that's why that guy was driving around with a rear-ended Nissan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's why a lot of people are, especially. That's why a lot know. of people buy uh, boxers instead of Lotuses, too, because you're like, ooh, how long do I gotta wait for this part? Yeah. But I, but I was driving it, and then I was like, uh, "What?" The kid, one of the kids, was like, "Hey, why does it sound like it's raining? It's not raining." And I'm like, "Oh shit, that's the body." And I call Anthony up, and I say, "Hey, they get some weird noise on the right side." And he goes, uh, "He goes, bring it over." He goes, "So I bring the thing over." He goes, "Let me keep it for a day, and I'll tighten it up." Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Now it's not what you want to hear. With Land Rovers, <laughs> and I'm two years plus in. At the two-year mark with a Land Rover. I st- I've always, with every one since I uh, always get settling noises, right? Like a house from the fuck. It's like it's, like no, a they guitar, start like, like a guitar. The cars like start tuned. to loosen up. They do, and I, I go, you can tighten up my. I, I had no idea you could do this. He goes, yeah, we can tighten it up because I don't know if this has to do with the accident. This was just stuff here. Let let me go at it. And he t- he torqued the panels and he went That's through the so... the wet box and everything just went away. And I'm like, dude. That's I so had crazy. no idea you could do this new thing. Like, Tighten up the Land Rover. <laughs> it's 2021, no, dude. Toyota, Toyota. First of all, it's laughing, a 2020. Really okay, it's sorry. 2020. Sorry, but still, you no, no, like every, we're talking about a 2008. Matt, every <laughs> single car, as a matter of fact, not even Land Rover, every single Porsche I've owned at the two-year mark is making noises. They Can you all- tighten up a Porsche? That was, uh, if it's a body panel, I think he might be able to, d- to do it. But, you know, our GT3 Touring, our new one, was making, uh, I knew I was going to fail with this one. The, the idling engine noise was uh. making the rear view mirror vibrate at certain. Uh, wow. uh, really? Yeah. So maybe like 3,000 RPMs. Car? Hey, 2000. Wow. But it was doing it since the first day. Wow. Like it would idle and it idles a little higher t- till it warms up. And then suddenly the mirror goes, <laughs> and you're like, well, well shit. Oh, There's nothing man. I can tighten up there. Yeah. That's just the resonance of the engine at a certain RPM. You this know? is supposed to do this. This is a motorsport feel. Always look forward. Uh, they always do this. Yeah. Yeah. This is a finely engineered piece. I, I, I am terrified when I hear a sound. 
Yeah, me too. I freak out. I know out. I'm going to not be able to find it. I get annoyed when I hear shit like that in my 1986 Ferrari. Yes. Like, it just drives me insane. But what? it's our duty to stamp them out. Yes, and I Get know. rid of them. What's yeah. your highest mileage new Porsche that you own? Or new-ish, let's say. 2,000 miles. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you have some with That's the only 20, modern one you've got. Zuckerman really and Zuckerman. I Zuckerman. right now have a run of great cars coming in, thanks to our friend Mike O'Donnell at Clearwater Porsche. Well, the Florida connection. Right. He's hooking us up. So we have the uh, the touring, which came from Dean at Santa Clarita. Mike has us in a GT4 RS next month, and then a, we just spec'd out a GT3 RS mm. that's coming shortly after. You're gonna I don't know that we can afford all of these cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan, the stupid plan, we plan Z them, me and yeah. Zuckerman, is to... Just take them as far. Like, the Touring might be out the door as the GT4 RS is delivered next month or February. Do you love that Touring? I do. You yeah. do? I do. I, mm. I really do. Okay. Yeah. But as I, I've, I've been doing this for a little while, I know I'll fall out of love at some point with it. Yeah. But, yeah, I could I could hold on to this car for years and be happy with it. I didn't love the current Touring. I thought it was a little stiff. It needed work. Yeah, oh, did we you put do new thing? tires on it, yeah. Oh, the tires, that the changed tires, it? The tires changed it enough. So you took off Cup 2s, right? Isn't that what it came with? Cup 2 Rs. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And yeah. then what did you put on? Uh, I put on a P0 PZ4, which is a oh. turbo tire. Oh, okay. Per the tire shop who's been dealing with GT3 owners in that are, Santa Monica. <laughs> that are bitching about their cars riding Yeah, and he said, he said, try this. If you don't like it, you know, we'll take them off. And at first, I didn't, and I said, something is still wrong about this. Why don't we uh, uh, check out the front end alignment? <clears throat> and he said, okay, we can do that, but it's a new car, right? And I go, yeah, it's a brand new car. I go, but I, I sense something's off here. Mm -hmm. And it was. It was off uh, really? like a, a third of a degree, maybe. And he's like, he called me up. He's excited. He goes, you were right. He goes, it was off. He goes, now it's perfect. Try well, it now. And what then, was off? The camber or one the was camber, different than the other? or Something. Hmm. All I know was it was off by it a third of spec, degree, basically. and you were right. And yeah. the behavior was that it was pulling or that it was darty or what? Both. Or bo oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that 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 racing tire, like uh, feeling the road like a like a blind man reading, bra <laughs> uh, you know, braille. Is yeah. that the right word? Yeah. You know, just grabbing onto it was gone when I put a regular tire on it. And I don't track that car. We well, want it turns it out touring. We wanted a touring something. GT3, something yeah. we could race around the canyons and not push too hard, but then we could drive during the week to work. And it worked. And those tires, you know, after a few hundred miles got, were great. Oh, interesting. Just great. And that car, and I gave it to Zuckerman. He'd driven it once and said, I'm done with it. I don't want this. I can't drive it. It's too nasty. I gave it to him, and he's like, oh, fantastic. Oh. Loved yeah. it. How about that? And he said, let's sell it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> my Boxster Spider, interestingly enough, mm. did not come with Cup Twos like they're, I think, supposed to. It came with a Dunlop tire. Well, that's all those Porsche GT cars. It's whatever they have when they're making the car, whatever's in stock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't necessarily. I, I think there was a supply chain issue with Cup Twos, and so they came with these Dunlop. Yeah, things. I went down a tire wormhole. Yeah, I, I got the whole story. So you I get what you get, and you don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't give a shit. I'll drive them for whatever, and then I'll put exactly what I want right. on them when exactly it's time. Exactly right. But. They're, but, they're, they're gone after a year anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just, I was like, Dunlop, what the fuck is this? This is weird. Yeah, but yeah. someone who drove on them was like, actually, those things are pretty good. Like, try them before you yeah. talk mad shit. But uh, I was supposed to go get my car today. Today was the day. It's my fucking birthday. Where I, is it? It's at HRE Wheels right now. Oh, okay. So I, the last modification to the car, oh, on the shirt. This that fucking Fuck cup, dude. That one, right? I saw that one right on the shirt. Um, told you, know, you, you should have used my, you should have used my mug me. there. It's a t-shirt. But uh, I'm just saying, it just wasn't a pretty spill. <clears throat> um, Let me see. The Let's last modification right with Tell these. Tell me what happens here. And clear. Okay, good. These uh, HRE wheels, they're very light. R101 yep. wheels, and it's a, it's a tasteful design. They're not really obnoxious, but. The color finish that I chose for the wheels, yes, you know they 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 don't have uh, like a configurator online that you can plug in the color Is of it? your car. No, I don't have any photos of the wheel. That's the wheel. <clears throat> oh, oh wow, that's gorgeous. Light. It's a nice looking wheel. Yeah, 
And so, is it that color? No, those that the we we have a photo up of a black one. I the color I wanted because I'm into fucking a little aggressive and wild colors. I chose a frozen polished copper, which looked on the website. I think it's down. I think it's one of those maybe. That yeah, that was it. Left one left. I chose that, which I thought would work uh, yeah, really, really well. Can you explain really well. your whole color <laughs> thing to me? Because uh, you don't get it? I accept anybody's color choices because it's, it's their car. Yeah. But I would love to know your theories on this car and those wheel, that wheel color. Like, what does that say to you? So, like, Because I can tell you that the theory of each one of my cars when I pick a color. Like, the GT3 Touring well, is the, agate gray. I wanted it to blend in. I didn't want to be right. nice Right. So, so you know, the, I had the Cassis Red Safari. Yeah. Frozen Berry Metallic was a modern version of that. It's a little different. It's not exactly the same. But it's the same kind of vibe where it's 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 a depending on the light, it changes color. Right. It's that same kind of rose ish color. So and you look at this and you like that. You yes. respond positively. I look it. at that color and I think it's fun. I oh, like good. it. Okay. I think it's fun. I also think so fun. Yes, fun. Fun. It's fun. All right. It is fun. That makes sense. I also we had that Boxster twenty fifth anniversary as a press car. Right. That that had it was silver, right? Well, the car was yeah. that box, but it but it had, um, it had the 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 red interior like my car has. My car right. has the two tone red and black interior, and and it had these wheels that were white gold, and that I thought were really cool. And I looked on Porsche's configurator when I built the car, mm -hmm. and I built it with white gold wheels from the factory. There it is. And I thought it looked really cool. Right. No, I like but that. But Porsche too. wanted ten thousand dollars <throat> for white gold stock wheels, right? Which I thought was too much. Mm -hmm. So I originally said, okay, I was going to have someone uh, local just powder coat my stock wheels for like fifteen hundred. And HRE said, hey, I know you're doing this car. We'd really like to make you a set of wheels. We've got this R101 light lightweight wheel. That is, it looks great on Caymans and Boxsters, and it's three pounds a corner lighter than the stock wheel, and it's just as strong, and people love them. And, and those go, are all the color choices on that. You wheel? can get, yeah, you can Let get anything. See that. You can get anything. That's amazing. Put, get, show um, me some of those blue wheels. The blues actually on the right car. The blues look really cool. Do they have a Riviera blue. Uh, I don't know, maybe that lower one right below it. Might be. Brushed Brush. electric blue. That's amazing. Some of those are really cool. On a white car, those blues <clears throat> could look really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I went through the configurator, and I found this frozen polished copper, and I thought it would be cool. Now, I didn't, I didn't, couldn't. You I, just answered my question. You said, I want a fun spec. Yeah. Fun spec. That's it. That's fun. it. That's it's a, not that's blend in spec. It's right. fun spec. Right. Because um, I get asked a lot about your car. <laughs> a ton. What do you think about... People want me to talk shit about your car, and I won't. I, I never do. I don't. If someone I loves people the, don't like it, that's fine. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, it's totally they fine. To, they don't have to build one. Every car spec has kind of a theory behind it. I just didn't know what yours was, and fun makes perfect sense. Yeah, I want a fun it's thing. Silly. It's, it's silly. It's silly. Yeah. Yes. No, I get and, that. And when you and especially because I put this hot, super hot rod engine in it. Yeah. That yeah. it's like fucking pink, and no, it's, it's got this it's, hen, this engine in it. It's uh, it's cool. Long uh, Porsche tradition to do cars like that. Very Porsche used to do uh, wild. Yeah. Spec. You know. Dude, if you look at go to the museum and you look at some <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. Porsche family's personal cars, mm -hmm. like whoa, these guys were fucking playing around. Yeah, yeah. Like um, uh, what's his name? Todd Blue's like Acid Trip nine sixteen. Yeah. With the paisley interior, it's like I wow. thought all his cars were blue. It is, but it is, it's not pink. It's blue, but it's but it's anyway. So he's like Guy Fieri. But with blue. Yeah. The guy doesn't do the yellow thing anymore, <laughs> but that photo will live in infamy forever. So anyway, the the, the point is we <clears throat> they made the wheels. Yep. And I said, send me the picture of the wheels. Call me. I you know, I want to see them next to the car and I just I want to make sure they're good before you put them on. And he sent me the picture. I showed the picture to Zach. We <clears throat> instantly looked at it and went, That's not good. Oh really? Yeah, it didn't work. It just did. It just didn't work. The idea was kind of sound, but it but it didn't work. And the guys at HRE were like, "Yeah, bro, this like this doesn't work." And I was like, "At the risk of asking you guys to do double work, I think we need to refinish them in a different color." And right. they're like, "Yeah, we agree." So rather than frozen polished copper, they're doing frozen champagne, 
which do, do we have that? Uh, it's frozen champagne instead, which is <laughs> a sa- it's the same take on the on the uh, is it up is- there? I don't know. Yeah, that's it. There frozen polished champagne, which is a silvery gold. It's yeah, much yeah. lighter. It's more like Porsche's white gold factory. And yeah, that is, that one they actually showed a swatch next to it, and it looks much better. Right. So I'll get it next week. Fantastic. That's, but I, at least we were able to make <clears throat> the call and and not end up with something that's not good. Right, right. Anyway, it's funny that people are asking you about my – they just want you to shit on it? <clears throat> People just want everybody to shit on everything. <laughs> I guess <laughs> no, that's true. No, but there, you never get anybody loving a certain spec anyways. Yeah. You know, whenever I post a card, it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you could get something <clears throat> very basic and no one will. Well, be... we did, the, like I said, the GT3 Touring, there were no good color colors in the normal color palette. We didn't have paint to sample. So we went with gray and said, let's, let's uh, keep this under the radar of this car. That said, day one, I got a speeding ticket in it. So it was right <laughs> I not that. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> below the radar in any way. And it it looks cooler than we wanted it to look. So with the GT4 RS, we did color uh, paint to sample. Mm. We're doing Oslo Blue with some special wishes stuff and the carbon fiber. And that's Can you spec- look up Oslo Blue, Zach? I don't know if I know what Oslo Blue looks like. O S L O Blue. Um, uh, we're not doing black wheels anymore. We have silver wheels on it, mm-hmm. and uh, we think that spec's going to be great. Oh, is that Oslo blue right there? Yeah, yeah. There was oh, that's G- very nice. It was an Oslo blue GT2 RS that really was the inspiration for it. But oh, that's a they, cool yeah, color. See that car right there? See that PTS the, Oslo blue Facebook? Right, don't click on center, it. Center, Because it won't, yeah. Up, up, up one right. to the right. Yeah, that's that the one. car that inspired the spec right nice. there. Nice. That's a very nice color. Yeah. Yeah, in I like fact, that a lot. You know, it's very much like that. That's a very nice color. Yeah, yeah. that'll do. That's yeah. good. It's, it's a deeper Miami kind of, fun. kind of, yeah. Um, and a color I've always liked on old cars. Yeah, it's good. And then, you know, I just spec the GT3 RS out today, and that had a lot of back and forth with, uh, with Zuckerman and Jerry and my other, hey, what should we do here? So I took our ideas to Mr. Pruniger, oh. Andreas Pruniger, the uh-huh. designer of the car, and he said, here, here's what you want. And he, he saw an angle that we weren't seeing, and I went, wow. That, str- an aesthetic <clears throat> angle. He sa- I said, here's what we're all thinking for this car. What do you think? And he said, this is the one, but this is how you're going to do it. And I don't want to announce it yet. And I went, wow, that... That's why you're Andy Pruniger. All right. That's why you're Andy Pruniger. Cool. That's going to be fun. Yeah? Yeah. I I think it's that car's going to be interesting. I can't wait to try one on the street. Just from what people have told me so far, <laughs> it's, it's going to be an awful street car, but a mo- you know, it's a monster on the track. <laughs> I know. There's a video I saw yeah. of uh, of uh, oh, Bergmeister fucking Ooh. flinging it around Silverstone <clears> like bad. a boss. Um, yeah. yeah. And it turns in like a race car. Um, but I just can't see how that translates into a usable street car. <laughs> it won't. It's not. I mean, if the Turing was too much, then, yeah, this is going to be but see, so but, nasty. But, uh, it, the Turing's personality should have been more of a street car because it was called the Turing. Well, just like the me. last one was. Right. Yeah. I don't mind crazy, you know, uh, street legal race cars with license plates. I, I don't mind that, but that has to, it has to be the personality. Yeah. So I'll drive that car. And I think I'm more worried about the GT4 RS. You know, uh, Johnny Lieberman brought it by the house the other day, and, and I didn't want to drive it because I didn't want to ruin that first drive. But it it was a production, you know. It's a real deal. Yeah, there's yeah. no glass behind you. You just got that yeah. engine for the first time. Well, it's, it's, a, it's loud. A, there's a Very. there's a trade off, right? That to make that to get that greatness between yeah. six and nine thousand yeah. RPM, there's an equal and opposite effect yeah. Yeah. at the bottom of the power band. It's not like horrible, but it's not an everyday car for sure. But you know, we wanted. You know, thanks to uh, Porsche Clearwater, we wanted to make a nice one, however long we end up keeping it. We wanted yeah. to design something that we thought would g- contribute to the Porsche community at large. And if if we sell it in six months and move on to the next thing, so be it. But at least there'll be a beautiful creation that Zuckerman and I kind of put together. Yeah, cool. and, you know. All right. How That's often it. do you buy cars you've never driven? Like, I mean, I think it's cool that you don't want to drive you know, a press I car when you've already ordered one. I don't one. generally do that. Okay. I did it once or twice, maybe, that in my life. It was that Maserati by Turbo. 
that I bought. <laughs> Sight how'd that, unseen. How'd that go? I feel like it did not go well. I feel like you guys picked up another season and you went, you know what? I'm buying a fucking Maserati. And that's where I learned, don't do that and don't buy cars from Georgia. Uh, and then that's it, where my Ferrari came from and that holds up. And yeah. the Series 2A, this, the Land Rover, I bought kind of impulsively on eBay on a Tuesday, just bidding on it for the fun of it to feel better. And then I won the uh, auction and I went, ah. Uh, but I love that truck. I love that truck. So, um, I and those trucks are supposed to be pieces of shit. Yeah, I. You know, at, at this point, I know enough folks like you, where I can go, "Hey, Matt, have you ever driven this?" Yeah. Or any other number of person, and go, "What yeah. is it like?" Yeah, we'll give you an honest answer. I have a friend, you know, Steve Serio, who you know from uh, who, who's the real Bond. I guess he's not the. Uh, uh, what, I don't know what it, he, he used to have that dealership for. What, Lotus? Lotus and Aston Martin. What is he now? Real Bond Group? The Real Bond Group yeah. on Instagram. He's great with vintage cars. I can call him up. He, he always says, say, it's a tank. That's a tank. Yeah. You don't want it. It's a tank. And whenever he says that, I stay away from old cars. You know, it, it, it's that's my first phone call is, is the community at large to go, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Am I making a mistake? Mm-hmm. You know? So many people in my neighborhood, like uh, there are a couple of moms that are like, that old Land Rover, I want one of those. You got to get me one of those, honey, to their husbands. And I go, No. Drive this yeah, first, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a tractor. Yeah, you like the way it looks, but you won't like the way it drives. My neighbor at uh, at my new place has one of those with a fairly recent uh, TDI, yeah, you know, drivetrain that's like a a six speed manual and like a I know. Yeah. turbo four cylinder diesel. That Everyone that he, is that attracted to that yeah. stuff, and I know a lot of guys. Same thing with Broncos. Most the... of those are shit boxes too. Everyone but saw look, Ace Ventura too. You know? Yeah, whenever you see. Any of this stuff, any of this old Defender stuff, any of this custom stuff, you, every one of them drives differently. Yeah. And it's 90% you're not going to like the way it drives. <laughs> yeah. 90%. I know, you know, there are a lot of Porsche guys who, who go, I got this thing and now I'm getting rid of it. I'm like, why? He goes, it drives like shit. Yeah. Because it's, a modi- it's modified from what it originally was. Yeah. Or you never drove it in the first place yeah. to go, this is how it actually drove, right? Broncos are exactly the same thing. <clears throat> Unless yeah, you're getting yeah, right. an Icon... Where it's like their chassis and everything, yeah. and there's nothing actually Bronco yeah. left. But I'd say even then, drive that new one. Yeah, I mean I've driven a lot of Jonathan Ward stuff, and it's amazing. Yeah, but it's a specific uh, flavor and taste. Yeah, you've got to go. What am I actually going to do with this? Yeah, you know, and do They're I really like? They're perfect for going 25 miles an hour <clears throat> down Abbott Kinney Boulevard, and that's about it. I, I can, you know, they're show cars and yeah. show trucks, and then there are guys, you know, I know he sells to people in Colorado and out in the middle of nowhere who Icon love their trucks. drive and, much better than any other one. Yeah, it's they're noticeably legit. different. Yeah, I mean, what they do with the steering, and right. the brakes and stuff like you could drive one on the highway and not feel you're going to die, but drive um, it first. But you, sh- yeah. I mean, it's just a good rule of thumb yeah. for everything. Drive yeah. it first, and you won't be surprised. Yeah. Right. Yeah, have you uh, have you any observations about the uh, state of the collector car market right now? No, no. I'm hearing. Uh, I know Zuckerman just sold a couple cars for very high numbers. I mean, this time of year, a lot. What do you of, get rid of? A lot of metal the prices, but changes you... hands. I don't know if I should announce it here. Oh, is he not? He hasn't. It just happened yesterday. Oh, but okay. Yeah, I heard uh, about the numbers, and I went, w- "Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's 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 high," you know. <clears throat> um, this time of year, usually stuff is selling. I don't know why. Right before the end, people try to buzzer beater a couple of little purchases. It's and a business <clears throat> expense, you see. My business needed that it's just, uh, it's, 1973 Mercedes Pagoda SL. Yeah. Do you think Christmas bonuses come in in December I think for so. people? I think people are in a good mood and they want to buy themselves something nice and it's the holidays. And then there's a little kind of waiting period until the January shows in, in Phoenix and... You know, the numbers I'm hearing are strong. Whether that will continue, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. what's funny is the crypto market collapse has affected certain vehicles. Yeah. G-Wagons <laughs> and Rolexes. <Yeah. laughs> or yeah. Rolex Daytonas and G-Wagons seem to be going crashing because... Well, stuff that people <clears throat> were for inexplicably willing to pay yeah. double, triple, quadruple MSRP... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People are not willing to do that anymore. I find that piece of it kind of fascinating. The, yeah. the, the crypto purchasing like stuff. Like I, w- I would love to know what else other than G wagons they were acquiring and yeah. Rolex Daytona's white and black. Yeah, what yeah. were the other little <laughs> yeah. things? Um, but uh, yeah, things are, uh, from what I hear, okay, good. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? What do you hear? 
Um, <clears throat> mixed bag. Yeah. Mixed bag. Certain stuff uh, is has gotten easier to get, mm-hmm. and uh, we just sold uh, a, a a like new GT4 uh, on behalf of a of one of our clients that did not bring. I mean, he got it was over sticker, but it wasn't. Fifty Isn't that over amazing. sticker, yeah, uh, which I thought was interesting considering it was it was a like new car. That is accurate, I think. I mean, I, I saw a car, a touring new, a uh, thousand miles, paint a sample that was advertised at three fifty, sell for a little over three hundred. So yeah. I think it's down maybe that percentage, but yeah. but still anything over sticker yeah. for a new car, yeah, <clears throat> those numbers are down. They're not gone. Yeah, you know, there's still a healthy market for it. I think so. We'll see. I mean, we're going to take our touring out in a, in a few weeks, and sell it, and we'll oh, see you what are? happens. I think so. Oh. To make to make way for Wait. the GT4 RS, the GT3 RS came too quickly, but you know, again, we're 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 just we're human centipede <laughs> here. <Yeah>. We're kinda, <laughs> we, you grab it, drive it, let it go. Yeah. Grab it, drive it, let it go. You know, it's fun for us to just try these new cars out and put them on the podcast and own them for a little while and then keep moving forward. Yeah, new stuff doesn't stay in our collections long. You know, the old stuff does generally. Yeah. Trying to uh, not buy anything else. I think I'm done for a while. I'm tapped out. Well, you you have a new house. Yeah, no, I'm. That's what I'm saying. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. And Everybody I, gets to, into these uh, cycles. Yeah, the I'm done. Cycles. The my, one of my favorites. I've heard it with so many. Of, <laughs> I'm done. That's it. I'm finally. I've reached that. It, that's, ooh, it ends with ooh. What's that? It's a temporary yes. state. <laughs> it doesn't last. You just want to hear yourself say it, and then it's going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. We got press cars coming out the yin yang. What do you think about the Dakar? Uh, I I am not at all entertained by it. No, I think it's a useless vehicle. Have uh, you ever I, driven on dirt in a fun rally way before? Yeah. Okay. But I just don't think that car is going to get used. I think it's an exor- an interesting design exercise, and it's really cool to look at. Mm-hmm. I just I can't wait to see the some West Side dentist see them driving real, it around, real and, shiny at the fucking <clears throat> yeah Century City, ball. drifting in the Ralphs as he turns into the spot, and someone yeah. steals his cooler on his roof. I mean, it's the Rubicon edition for Porsche of like things that will be parked and driven around the city because someone wants to exude like, well, I'm a I'm a dirt person. I just don't have time, but I'd I like to be. Don't believe anybody uses Safari cars. They end up I agree selling them in a couple of years, and they don't have many miles on it. You do I one or two you. little Instagram videos. Keen uh, Lee puts on these events because he found that he found that That's people smart. needed yeah, a, they do. a curated event to take yes. them to, and so he just he just did his thing, and it was like twelve or fourteen of these cars, and they including my old car, yeah, and they seemed to be having a good time. My problem was when I wasn't off driving cars for a living, yeah, I ultimately wasn't like, huh. I've got some free time. What am I going to go do? Like drive more out to the wilderness. It just correct. It, it was the same thing when I had a Raptor. I, I didn't was find just, myself wanting to do <clears throat> to do more driving. I was just out in Borrego Springs with my son and his friend on motorcycles, oh, really? driving around massive expanses of desert, and it would be amazing out there. It would be really fun. There yeah. were a lot of trophy trucks, and we're on little motorcycles. We're lucky we didn't get squashed. <laughs> but you know, did you have the flag? <clears throat> Gotta have the flag, right? Uh, on the, we had, uh, my son's friend had never been on a motorcycle before. Ooh. And so we Sand put him on, an, a- good place put him on an ATV. Okay. Okay. And gave him a flag. His did parents, you rent the bikes? What did you yeah, get yeah. the bikes? Yeah. San really? Diego Motorsport Rentals. They're awesome. Really? Talk to Oscar. They bring them out to the to Burrito Springs for you? You just they meet them out there? They are across the street from the desert. Oh, perfect. You get on them and you just boop. Man, you there. just go. Sick. And I have to say, you know, better than Gorman and so much fun and great. I met a lot of great people, lots of people in RVs. Everybody was driving very safely. You There's RV not, it? No. But but what, what I meant was, you know, at Gorman... Sometimes you don't know what's coming at you, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, higher elevation trees and things that yeah. can block things. Out we're out at Borrego Springs, there's a lot of flat surface, and then there are a lot of hills, but you can see everything. Mm-hmm. And that the ability to see means you can see it coming at you yeah, yeah, and you yeah. don't get squished, right? Or you can find these gigantic flat like basins. They, it, it's right next to an airport that's made of dirt that you can't ride on. Mm. There's an airport runway. Um, we, we were in La Quinta, you know, hanging out for the holidays, so it was about an hour from there. It'd be a little longer, I guess, from here. Um, 
But unless you live near a place like that, yeah, the the the, the Dakar 911, Safari 911s, I feel like you know I, they're not going to get used. Like it would be a waste for me to get one. I even though I think they're cool, it's just yeah. I don't live in a place like that. If I happen to have a place like that in my backyard and I wanted to be out there every weekend goofing off, wrecking my car. Porsche guys like to keep their cars perfect, <laughs> right? When you're off roading, yeah. And you're, you know what I'm saying. When I took my my safari car to El Mirage, it took me <clears throat> weeks to clean it. When I was with Land Rover, uh, uh, their Defender launch yeah. at Imperial Dunes, right? Watch out for the trees on the path because it'll scratch the paint. Well, uh, I of course hit one in my <laughs> first five minutes, and it scratched from here to there. And I was thinking to myself, I don't think I could live with myself if I took my own truck out here. Yeah, I, I think of my vehicles a little differently, right? And if I were going to off-road, it would be the old Land Rover. But I'm not sure I can trust that thing on the highway. Yeah, right. So you know, yeah, I I, I think this is a pretty exercise in a cars and coffee thing for everybody to look at and everybody will love, but I doubt they're going to get driven. I just Speaking of it. sporty dirt cars, did you guys see the ad for Lamborghini? The oh, most the, amazing. the Storato ad? Did yeah. you see this thing? No. It I couldn't believe it was real. Hilarious. They, is uh, it supposed to be, like, funny? I don't think oh, so. I think it's is. supposed to be the coolest. They made a they made a an ad for this fucking this. thing that is... Here it is. Are we going to get in trouble for this? I don't think Why so. Why would you get in trouble? So. For playing YouTube picture. video on YouTube? We'll see. We don't need to play the whole thing, but it's... It sounds like a Budweiser commercial. Well, that was dubbed. <laughs> All... Oh, was that guy talking? No, this guy's for real. Master of Speed. Master of Speed. <clears throat> <laughs> this... Most car commercial announcers are the worst. The Porsche guy is one of the worst. Like, you cannot believe... Oh, wait, Dusty that gold. is him talking. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, you what? Can't... It's, oh, yeah, wow. No, it, it feels like word salad. It doesn't of get better. By it the doesn't. Way. It just keeps. It's, it's like a minute and a half of this. Uh, That's the second bad video I watched. The other one was incredible. with our friend Shmi introducing the car. It well, I I think it's interesting that Lamborghini <laughs> has made. It's that's their last purely internal combustion car. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's the end of the Huracan. It's Again, the last I think a great press event for us to hoon somebody else's car. I'm. But, I was just invited. To the Dakar launch, yeah, which is going to be in Morocco. Wow, which I'm kind of fucking stoked Ooh. on, actually. Moroccan COVID would be wonderful. yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that special variant, special variant. <laughs> <laughs> that's special that's Tangia that shit. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, that's great that you can go on those things. Lovely. Yeah, uh, usually they're great. Sometimes they're not so great. This one I was promised will be great. I don't travel at all for car companies anymore. I won't. I do mean. It. That's kind of part of the job. Is it? it? Not For my me, job. Part this of my isn't job. my real job. No, I know. This is your real job. It is my real job. Also, this, this is, is just, my real job. This is just a hobby. For me, <laughs> <laughs> how convenient for you. Um, how do you like that Ferrari? Two nine six. Uh, uh, I don't want to blow up. Oh, is the video coming out Monday? Yes. So, so this just is give after. me a couple of. No, thoughts. no, we can talk about it. I, we, what <clears> we've learned is we shouldn't talk about. Uh, we shouldn't the, review the car. We shouldn't the review podcast. the car on the podcast before the video ah, comes I out. See. It takes away from. All right, the tell me one thing you love about it. It's fucking fast. <laughs> it's really fast. Oh, good. It's, it's the first Ferrari I've <laughs> driven where it feels legitimately as fast as the 720. Wow. Um, and their hybrid integration is great. They've done an, an S excellent job integrating it. And if you told me. Uh, if, if, if you had me drive it and then ask me to guess the weight, mm -hmm. I would probably guess 300 pounds low. It's 3,700 pounds, but you'd never know it. Mm -hmm. um, their UI is a disaster. I mean, it's terrible. Mine totally, it totally froze on me today. Really? And, if, when it, with my, and the CarPlay screen, which is the main screen, which yeah, is yeah. the tack and everything, yep. just turned black. Oh, wow. Full black. I took a photo of it. <clears throat> it was crazy. And, That's uh, happening in a lot of cars I'm driving these days. In fact, it happened on the way down here in the Defender. Yeah. Just out of the blue, I just plugged it in. And then you're, you know, you're trying to reset your infotainment. Yeah. And you have to hold in the button for like 20 seconds, but you got to be in park. Yeah. And I'm on the 405. Yeah. So traffic jam, I get up to 13 seconds. Ah, oh, it's oh, moving. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. yeah. I tried to, yeah, it's, it wasn't good. But, but I, don't you think so much of it is all of these new phones and updates and the systems and... Well, I respect how difficult a job it is yeah. to integrate 
all the available phones into a car. Right, I, right. I absolutely respect that. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work perfectly every time, right. I try to not lose my shit about it. In the case of Ferrari, CarPlay is a $5,000 option. It's true. <laughs> Which is like... So it's got to work. It's extra. It's, it's got to work. Yeah, it it's got to work. work. And the fact that, like, if it doesn't work, mm-hmm. I now don't have a tack. Like, the whole screen went no, black. I, like, I, I didn't have any the, other... I had trouble with the Roma. The same yeah. thing. Yeah. Same well, I would thing. say the larger problem with Ferrari in mm-hmm. this instance is it's not that when it's not working or that it stops working frequently. It's that when it's working as designed... It's a flawed design. Like yeah. when when you pulled it up to pick me up, you were trying to integrate CarPlay. I open the door. It has a, war- a thing that says door open, but it eclipses the thing <clears throat> like the CarPlay function you're trying to add. So there's a, there's an alert for like trunk open and all these other things that normally in a car pop up separately from that MMI or media screen. Yeah. But they yeah. they, do all, they do everything in the dash. Right. So that's like even when it's functioning, it's, it's not in the a way. good. Yeah. But but it's a beautiful car. It looks great. The fact that it's a V6, I don't give a now shit. You're it's saying sound, too much about it. Now you are awesome. reviewing it. That's okay. The video already went up by the oh. time this. Right. The uh, it sounds great. Mm-hmm. It's fucking fast. What color is that? That's Rosso Ferrari, not it's Rosso nice. Corsa. It's, it's nice. a little yeah, darker, yeah. kind of candy red, yeah. and not the orangey red that That's is nice. uh, Rosso Corsa. You should try to get uh, get it. Okay, they'll get it for you. This is uh, this car will be here for a little while. It's it's really really nice. Oh, there to it drive. is. Look, you drove yeah. it to Bills. I drove it to Bills today. Yeah. I also tried on. I went to Polacek. Is it Polacek or Polacek? What is it? Know. What's right? I think Polacek. You know Andrew up there? Yeah, yeah. He he flip over in the in in this to the next. I tried on the the new fifty millimeter. Wow. Deep sea challenge. Go to the next photo, Zach. Look how look oh at this my on my God. wrist. I have an eight inch wrist. I have like. The biggest wrist of anyone south of Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what okay? is that? That is a 50 millimeter variant <laughs> of the deep sea. It's Rolex's first titanium watch. It's full titanium. Yeah. It it has a depth rating. Are you ready for this? 36,000 feet. Wow. That is the depth rating. It has an MSRP of $26,000. This place, Polacek in Calabasas, mm-hmm. they're only getting one. They won't mm-hmm. sell it. It's going to be in the case forever as a display. It is. It looks like a joke. You it can does. get. You can wear it with your Safari 911. <laughs> yeah. but this is, and then I'll drop you in the deepest part of the ocean, and I go, "There's where you belong." That's where my other Boxster is, actually. <laughs> <That's right>. Incidentally, <laughs> what's funny is that I'm going to help you use this. It's yeah. not worth get. Like if you drop this in the ocean, I think it would cost you more to go retrieve it, even Probably. though it's still be functioning yeah. than its actual MSRP. You'd have to go. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, James Cameron. Can you help me get my can watch, you swing please? By? Yeah. It's uh, Spike. It's so thick. It is no joke. Like as thick. <laughs> Is one of my fingers. It's so crazy. The crystal, just the crystal, is nine millimeters thick. Oh my god! (laughs) Oh no! It's so huge. Thirty-six thousand fucking feet. Wow! Here's look at Johnny's. Johnny's in here saying he needs the deep sea. Dude, it's so crazy. You got it. If you're in that area, you got to go by and have Andrew show it to you because it's just hysterical. Um, the titanium. I wasn't even cool. a fan of the regular Sea Dweller. It no, I'm just, not either. It's just I'm not, too I'm, much. It, it is. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not something I want to wear. Yeah. It feels like a boat anchor. Mm-hmm. This is just like it's like a full hold my beer moment from uh, from Rolex. I thought so you'd weird. find that funny. Yeah. Uh, before we get to our, uh, uh, I want to do a little game. Okay. My new favorite podcast. Yeah. Is called Are You Garbage? Have you okay. heard of Are You Garbage? Nope, just it's did. these two Philly goombas. Okay. Who find out they have they have comedians and yep. celebrities on and they find out if they're classy or trashy okay. by asking a series of questions. I can tell you right now. They turned it into a card game. I'm trashy. I bought the cards. <laughs> I'm going to do three three random cards of Are You Garbage for Spike Ferriston. <clears throat> okay. And I realize this is am another... I, am I trying to be garbage or am I matter. trying not to be no, garbage? I'm just You're trying to be honest. Just trying yep. to be honest. Okay. And I realize this is another podcast bit, but I think it's funny and I'm stealing it. Respect... To uh, Foley and Kippy of Are You Garbage. Here we go. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay. Have you had a Hot Pocket in the last 365 days? Wow. No. No? Okay. No. Classy, one point. Have you ever gone to a wax museum on a family vacation? Nope. Oh, for two. You were classy so far. 
Number three, have you ever had a bathroom that was carpeted? Carpeted bathroom. Hmm. Ever. I do have a memory of a carpeted bathroom somewhere. Oh, yeah, I did. did? I did. All right, one I for did. three. I I'm going to go you're, you're very, you're classy based on those. Come three. on, ask me one more. Just I pick another one up. Those right. weren't very good. They weren't. All right. Hot Pockets. I would have eaten one. I just, no one ever bought them for me. That's not. That one, that one, I'm, I'm trying to find a. <laughs> no. Hang on. Have you ever kept batteries in the refrigerator? <laughs> what does that do? Nothing. Actually. I have, but, but I realized a, it didn't do it is anything. A tra- it's a trashy thing yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, My wife keeps them in a bag. She won't let me throw them out. And every time I throw them out, she gets angry at me. She says, what are you doing? You're a polluter. You're supposed to save those. And, and I go, I, I, I would, but you put them in a bag. They sit on a counter for another half a year, and then they're in your car banging around. And when I use your car, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Then they become the thing that rattles in your car. Yeah. Uh, that's anyone, assy. Does that's anyone, not classy. I'm assy in that situation. Anyone in your family ever own a pontoon boat? A pontoon boat? No, but I have done a great deal of pontoon boating with some friends. Yes. So I I, I it's, it sounds like I'm right in the middle. I think you're. I think you are. I, I enjoy a good pontoon I boat ride. Of course you do. Yeah. I yeah. once te- when I was testing boats for like a year, I tested the fastest pontoon boat in the world. Yeah. It went 57 miles an it's hour. It's great. It was a death trap. <laughs> no, but not on a lake. It's fine. Well, yeah. it's great until you try to turn, and then it do- they don't lean, so it's like it's a it's a floating living room. Yeah. The pontoon boat. Like we, we like, would drive them, ride them in uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene in Idaho. We we loved our pontoon boats. They're fantastic. Yeah. Sometimes you can ski right off the pontoon boat. This one you definitely could. Yeah. 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 It was. It's a death trap at 57 <laughs> miles an hour, I assure you. Uh, let's go to the Patreon. Of course, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. You want to get in the action on the show. You want to get the show ad-free. You want to get it the same day we do it. That's where you do it. Patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. All right. Andy in Colorado says, uh, thoughts on Land Rovers versus Cayenne <clears throat> or Macan for daily drivers. What are we look missing out on by not looking at Land Rovers? What pushes you towards Land Rovers? That was a spike question. Um, always Land Rover for my SUVs, always. Um, I, it's, it's funny. I had another supermarket situation on the other side of me. You had the crazy lady. Uh, there was a guy in a Macan. Same day? Same day. Okay. And a uh, Cayenne started up, and it sounded really cheap. He had just one of the entry-level kind of uh, Cayennes. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, if I had closed my eyes, I would have said, that is a Toyota or Volkswagen, maybe, yeah. sound. And my experience with those trucks, unless you're getting, like, the turbo version or the GTS, yeah. is they always kind of felt cheap to me. That's the first thing. Um, secondly, from I don't want to be reminded of my cars in my SUV. Oh, I don't want to be thinking, ah, oh, God, this looks like a Porsche, but it doesn't drive exactly oh, like interesting. Yeah. the current 911 that I have. I'd like to have something different. And and from the moment I drove Land Rovers and the moment I liked the old Land Rovers growing up, the series cars, when I see the fishermen with them on the beach, it, I just vibed with the brand. Didn't and, you have an LR4 <clears throat> before? No, no. You didn't? What did you no. have before the? The very first uh, truck I had was just a, a regular Range Rover. Oh, yeah. I, I remember driving down. I'd been Every time I, I lived in Hollywood and I drove by Hornburg, was it? Oh, yeah. And every time I'd see this silver uh, Range Rover there, and uh, all I was driving was old cars. I didn't have any kids, so I was only driving my old stuff. And I said, I'm going to go get that thing. I think that could be a good daily driver. <laughs> I'm starting to need a daily driver to drive through Hollywood. But, at the, you know, at the time I was driving my Dino to work and doing <laughs> stuff like that. Like, it made no sense. And I walked in there, and I drove it, and I found it very comfortable and very easy to do long-distance driving in it. It's one of those things, you yeah. know. You try a sneaker on; it feels good, and uh, and I thought, all right, th- this could be a brand for me. And I've been driving those trucks ever ever since. And I find that if you can't, if you were lucky enough to have that two car garage going, you know, uh, for me, the nine eleven and a, a Land Rover SUV is a perfect combination of things. Yeah, I, I don't need do my SUVs to be sports cars. No, it's not I don't. I don't, I, I don't ever buy the fast ones. I yeah. buy the entry level one. Yeah. That's it. In fact, I just talked my dad out of buying the fast one. He did Cayenne turbos for years. Yeah, yeah. I talked him into the hybrid. 
There's no. Which I'm I mean, the, 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 I drove the Lamborghini Urus and really loved that. That's probably the only exception I would make, but. They're expensive. You They're know? really, really expensive. expensive. Yeah, uh, Michael Cosgrove. If you had to collect something other than Porsches, what would you collect? <clears throat> um, one, one make, I suppose. Uh, uh, hmm. You had a couple Ferraris. Yeah, Ferrari. It would have to be Ferrari. It'd be expensive. Yes, it would. <laughs> but it it would be Ferrari. If it weren't Ferrari, I would I would be into old Land Rovers of some kind. Yeah. Like you know. Uh, Christian says, what press car have you wanted to buy that's not a Porsche? I tried to buy the Shelby GT350R press car, oh, the yeah. actual press car. Oh, for sure. They would not sell it to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I learned about <clears throat> why they, 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 there's laws. They actually, the manufacturers yeah. own press cars. Right. And they have to go through dealers. It's yeah. like a whole fucking to-do. I came close to getting a, a GT3, that yellow GT3. Oh, yeah. Way back when, that first, maybe it was a 991. Yeah, it was. I remember and that And they car. did offer it to me, but then it wasn't, it was so expensive, I thought, I'll just get, you know, the new one. That's Why good, would I buy, buy? Lee Keen drifted the fuck out of that on our TV show. <laughs> well, so that was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. It had been really beaten on. Yeah. I expected yeah. them to go, hey, eighty thousand dollars. Isn't that but funny that I tried to buy the X five M press car? <laughs> yeah. Also, I loved it, <clears throat> and they were, and I was like, you know what? They, they didn't. The price they gave me was like high. Yeah, and yeah. I was like. But it's got like sixteen thousand miles, and it's been like beat on. They're like, yeah, um, by people like me. You put eight thousand miles on it, and you beat on you it. You put eight thousand miles on a press I took, car. I took it on uh, the one shit. lap of America yeah. event, yeah. which was like when all said and done, it was something like six. Jesus. And yeah, I put a lot of miles on that car. Um, I usually judge a car by how much I miss it when they take it back. Sure. And I've driven a couple lately that I did miss a lot, and they were both uh, Mercedes EQS. Oh, really? But specifically, the Mercedes EQS SUV was uh, a Was big... that the EQB? I think it's EQS SUV. Oh, it is? Right? I don't I, know. Uh, 425 miles, even though it's stated, I think, 375 to the charge, but really made an impression in my life. Not just with me, but wherever I was going in it. My kids, my wife, my oh, neighbors. Oh, yeah, it is EQS It doesn't look like much on the outside. On the inside, it yeah, was But it's a, reasonably attractive. It was a light leather interior with three rows that looked like the most beautiful little hotel room you'd ever seen. <laughs> and whenever we would step into it, um, people would just crowd around it and go, what is that? Hmm. And as far as an electric competitor to test there, it was that situation right there. Did it do the weird brake <clears throat> pedal thing? What is that? When you use the regenerative braking yeah and you lift your foot off the accelerator pedal in that car the brake pedal moves away from you oh i couldn't see it really yeah oh, but yeah, i did does. did like the regen it's on the paddles yeah, the, got, yeah. you know you like, would have felt it if it, maybe they changed it because <clears throat> you, i you would have this thing. car was such a winner that it made my wife go well, you, you need to get this oh. this is what i want instead of my model y which okay. you know is, is tricky and then so did just a bunch of folks who just saw me getting out of it we should try that. We should try out. that one. The e the EQS sedan. We liked a lot of things about it. I just drove that. The there, AMG. There were a few things about it that were a little weird. Here's the thing. I mean, it's it's another beautiful. It it's such a luxury thing. Both of these vehicles, yeah. right? They're expensive. They're in the mid close to 200, right? Oh, I think. they are. They're that expensive. The AMG EQS that I just drove, maybe 150. That was I I'm pretty sure was up there as well. But they do wrap their arms around, like you close those doors and it was so quiet in the AMG EQS and the SUV that I had to tell my son's friend, stop breathing so loud. <laughs> and we were doing, you know, 90 on yeah. the way back from Palm Springs using their, you know, not self-driving type, but level two kind of driver's yeah. aids. It was, it's just a very luxurious, comfortable electric experience that made me go, all right, there's an alternative to Tesla. Now on the road, no charger at the place I was staying in La Quinta, I was scrambling. Yeah. Not just, and I, we had the Tesla there and we had this, two electric cars. And I took them both because I wanted to try this out and see how much anxiety am I going to get not being in the middle of nowhere where you have to drive 30 uh, minutes just to find things. Every mm -hmm. block feels like it's an hour long. And it was tricky. And, you know, the Mercedes system. Well, no, no, it was the apps, like Charge Hub. Yeah, First, yeah. I downloaded the apps. They were taking me to charging stations as I'm ticking down. I've got 50 miles left that weren't open yet. Oh, and then that's I went to another up. place. That's not good. 
that was just empty. It was just carports. <laughs> the future home of charged uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm good. sweating now. Yeah. And I'm getting in really bad mood. Eventually, I found a, you know, Charge America, whatever that is. But it was 40 bucks yeah. to charge up. And it felt, it was in like a Target parking lot. And it didn't have that that experience a Tesla supercharging station does, where you feel like at least you're around a bunch of your people there and you feel like you're in a produced place. This felt like some weird part of a parking lot at a mall, which it was, where some of the chargers weren't working. So, you know, there the Tesla beats it. Wherever we were trying to charge the Tesla, it it was ready. The hotel that was near where we were staying was like, yeah, we have Tesla chargers. No charges for anything else. That car was easy to charge. Mercedes on the road, not. But if I were buying something for LA, I would pick that car over yeah. the Tesla for sure. Yeah, the the the. I mean, there's a lot of problems with. I mean, having a a, a, a charging station that only has to charge one type yeah. of vehicle yeah. versus a charging station that has to charge right. everything. It's a much <clears throat> more difficult problem, and also leaving it. The, the incentives aren't really there to maintain chargers properly and right, right. shit like that. And, and I think that'll work itself out over the next few years. Maybe. Um, but it's... Uh, Tesla still wins on the app, though. You know, it, it, it's all Well, if you're easier. being sent to fucking chargers <clears throat> that aren't built, that's a real problem. Yeah. That's a, fu- <laughs> that's a real problem. Because you, go, you, you throw it up, like, and then I started using the Mercedes uh, charging navigation... Was that better? And there, it was, but it throws up every charger. You have a choice of level one, level two, level oh. three being the supercharger. You can't, you can't filter that out? You can. Oh. But then lots of stations disappear. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, again, you're kind of anxious. What ended up happening after a few days is we got into our groove. We found this place behind a business that had empty chargers, and my wife would drive me down. Yeah. I put the car there. I came back five hours later. Yeah. But I, you know, and I'm sure I could have done this if I had the Mercedes app. The, the Tesla yeah. app, I know exactly when the thing's going to be done. And we did yeah. that with the Tesla app. It's like, we're ready. Yeah, know? like I, I have the Ford app for our Mach-E yeah, yeah. and it tells me everything. But, but again, but, m- the, both of these vehicles are luxury vehicles, sure. right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. We still don't have that inexpensive uh, electric car yeah. that is affordable and for we everyone. Won't, we won't for a while. <clears throat> We won't for a while, yeah, and we, we don't for a while. have the infrastructure to charge them anyway. For so, sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's going to be a real fucking problem yeah. when they start mandating it without knowing what that really means. A few places in Palm Springs, a few gas stations had the chargers. Which well, you, can, is that, you could see that pathway mm-hmm. going, well, why doesn't a gas station have a couple chargers, too? We, uh, at, at this, I keep talking about it, at this uh, mobility conference I went to in Germany, there was a representative from Shell. Uh-huh. And they spent quite a bit of time talking about how space was being allocated right. in key markets at their gas stations yeah. for charging. That's the move. Yep. For yep. sure. For sure. Uh, Sean Gallagher says, have any of you driven an Ascari? If so, what's your take? <laughs> I never have. No. Nope, not me either. No. I don't know if an Ascari has ever <laughs> been on fucking American soil. Um, Matt, you said uh, Bud215 says that I once said a Grand Seiko watch is stealth wealth. What would an automotive <clears throat> example be? Um, automotive example of stealth wealth is like a 1968 911S numbers matching. If you just saw one of those on the road, you would not immediately assume you're looking at $350,000, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nice car, don't yeah. be wrong, but like, mm-hmm. you know. Something like that, maybe? Most vintage 911s are stealth wealth. Yeah. I think people that buy a lower engine spec, like a Cayenne, but if they option it to the moon, because in the back just says yeah. Cayenne, but if they spent 60 grand making it you know, yeah. exactly how they want it. Or you do the German thing where you debadge your RS6, right. you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we but. don't live in a place with stealth wealth. <laughs> no. So it's hard to go. I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen that. I see ostentatious wealth yeah. all over the place. I see I see fake badging and extraneous badging all over the place. Yeah. Um no. Yeah, I mean a cla- a classic 911 is a, is a stealth wealth kind here of thing. where we are for sure because, you know, you've got the Rolls crowd here and the Bentley crowd. Mm-hmm. They're the ostentatious ones. Sometimes when I see a base 911, I go, that's stealth wealth. A 9146 <laughs> You know, or, no, that's just cool. Those yeah. are great cars. I wouldn't think. I, I don't think wealth when I see that car. Uh, those cars, you know, I had one that I, I'm pretty sure I bought at the time. It was a, it was expensive. It was twenty grand. I bought mine, and it had uh, 
twelve thousand original miles oh, on really? it. Oh, really? Yeah, a, that's a big money car and that's, now. That's why it had such a big number. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the nine eleven T I used to own also had sixteen thousand miles, and it was about sixteen thousand wow. dollars. Again, that was a high number. Them's were the then. days. Well, I hope they come back down. Uh, Andrew N says. Mm-hmm. Uh, Truth and Dare. Uh, Truth, what is the car that got away? And <clears throat> Dare, call out the manufacturer that could do better. Well, I, I could have bought a Quicksilver 4 GT with 1,600 miles on it for $130,000 in 2013. Wow. And I should have because yeah. now that car is, would be five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. No matter how many miles I put on it, right. Quicksilver no stripe is very very rare, and that would have been the shit. I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> but the, I mean, I could just spin the roulette wheel yeah. of mistakes right now. But one of one of the ones I've been thinking about lately, which makes me laugh, is when I was uh, working on Seinfeld and then started making a lot of money, but was single, living in Hollywood. And my business manager, I got a business manager, like, hey, I go, what do you do? She goes, we're gonna, we're gonna help you spend your money. And I go, I don't like to spend it. I just wanna, wanna save it. She goes, you should really buy a house. And I go, I don't want that kind of pressure. And I go, but what do you think we could spend on a house? She's like, you know, you know, maybe you spend a million dollars on a house. And I was like, what are you crazy? Are you crazy? <laughs> But I hung up the phone. I was like, oh, what, a, what kind of car could I get for a million dollars instead? <laughs> and I very in quickly. The ni- in the 90s. In the 90s. Yeah. And I found a GTO for sale for $849,000. <laughs> and I said, this. Yeah. This is what I want. <laughs> and the manager being a very good manager. But maybe not. Yeah. Said, no, you're not going to spend your money on that. You're not going to spend your money on that car. And it, it, it would was have returned sixty x. <laughs> yeah, you sell it now for a hundred million, hundred and twenty million. But, yep. but at the time, it, the future is always black, like it is right now. And at the time, it, it, a car that cost eight hundred thousand dollars was insane. Sure, absolutely insane. Yeah, it would especially have been an old car. Yeah, yeah. I almost bought that IROC 911 of Jerry's. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. You know that car he used mm-hmm. to own. It was offered. Jerry passed on it first, and then it was offered to me for two hundred eighty thousand dollars. And now it's Jerry and I were offered one one day in the middle of nowhere. The, the, this uh, silver black seventy nine eleven S from Vostek Polax dealership with seven hundred and forty two miles and the original tires still on it and original everything else. The most original possibly nine eleven in existence. And we both had uh, Conda green cars, matching Conda green cars with mileage under $10,000 and went, oh, we don't need that. We like our car better. That car was $150,000. Oh, yeah. And I think could be for sale now for about a million. Yeah. Well, you know, so those... I, I, tons of those stories. Yeah, yeah. Everybody does. We all have those stories. Yeah. It's awful. Uh, call out the manufacturer that could do better <clears throat> was the, the dare half uh, of that. The one I, I think, think we of... just spent a few minutes on Ferrari's UI, but... Go on. I don't think about them right now. The one I, you know, and it's not going to be a popular opinion, but I, I think uh, the board should oust Elon Musk from Tesla right now. I really do. I like the product. I don't like him. And I think there are a lot of talented people over there and they have a great product. And, you know, they should kick that guy to the curb at this point uh, before he destroys a viable brand. Yeah. Um, Franz von Holzhausen. I like him. He's a great designer. Why? Let him run the company. How about that? How about we sell it to Apple and you know let them uh, turn it into an iPhone and, and bring it up to the next level? I don't yep. I don't know, but that that that's the change I I think that needs to happen, and I'm going to catch a lot of shit from no, the, not from me. I'm yeah, with you. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At this point, this guy's a li- liability to a yeah. to a great company. Yeah. And and someone could step in there if there's a board there and kind of write what's wrong with a lot of what's going on with them. Yeah. Right. You and I have argued so, about it before. Well, there's a reason most car companies aren't like a fucking one-man show. Correct. <laughs> it's not and because he, they look, should he, be an R. The guy deserves know. a lot of credit for getting it to where it is, but they're now at a crisis point, I, I think. Yeah. They're at a crisis point. I agree. You know, I've got, uh, my wife is a minute away from going, get that thing out of my driveway. Oh, really? Right? Well, it, it's going to be, for her, it's going to end up being political. It's oh. going to be that. And, yeah. I, and, you know, it's not so much when he's on Twitter saying, go ahead, vote for only Republicans. I, I'm cool with that. You can say whatever you want. I, that didn't even bother me. It's the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the fascism. Hey, let's bring it... the anti-Semitics. Oh, it's the fascism. Oh, <laughs> let's bring the fascism. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. bring the anti-Semitism I back mean, to the platform. In general, fascism is a turnoff for me. Yeah. Generally. 
Um, it is. Yeah. Worse than that, it's the rest yeah. of it. So, you know, you hate to see him take a good company down. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, it's fair. Uh, Mike Manillo, uh, are used. I don't. Th- I think you're a uh, false premise here. But are he says are used 911 coupes worth a premium over cabs? Uh, would a coupe be worth? Oh, I think he has it. Uh, oh, yeah. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I read the question backwards. Isn't used 911 coupe worth a premium over a cabriolet? There's a 20% premium on a used 911 coupe versus a cabriolet. Really? Probably. <laughs> there is? Uh, probably. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I've told people I don't think so. I've I told mean, people I think over and over. are worth more as, as far as regular driving 911s. It's weird because they, they cost more new yeah. and they're worth <clears throat> less used. Really? Yeah. The used buyer doesn't buy want the convertible. Right yeah. as much but but like i like convertible 911s i think they're cool <clears throat> i think they're fun i think the chassis rigidity thing is overblown especially in the modern cars that are pretty rigid um no it's about air you either also want that. the air or you don't want the air yeah right i i i and, and it's also condition it's mileage it's color it's a lot of but i tell things. a lot of people if you want to save money buying a used 911 get a convertible really yeah hmm. i'm not so sure about that about what Convertibles. I mean, again, it's about it's really about condition when it comes to 911. For me, it's always just about condition, miles, sure. originality. But ca- but do- car for car, the same <clears throat> car, a coupe will be more expensive. I don't know about market. that. I, it is. I don't know. Zuckerman just bought a 993 convertible that was I very know. expensive, but it was condition. Well, it was condition not, miles. Yeah, you're going to find some convertibles that are really expensive if they're yep. really nice. But the identical car. If Zuckerman's mint 993 convertible had a hard roof, mm-hmm. it would have been even more. I don't know about that. I think it would have. <laughs> I think it would have. Uh, Just trying to make the show interesting. Ryan here. says, I'm looking to purchase an intra-city delivery van for my ice cream company in Philly. Okay. Uh, light duty runs. <laughs> nothing, nothing is cooler than me, cooler to me than the Japanese cargo vans. I'm deciding between a Delica and a Hi Ace. Um, <clears throat> I have very smoking, little. He's smoking reefer. Yeah, right. Ryan, hundred percent. My Irish brother. So I have very little high ace experience. That's the the Japanese uh-huh. toy, the Toyota JDM van. Mm-hmm. Um, here's where I would advise against against buying either of these vans. One, if you're actually loading and unloading, <laughs> the sliding door is on the wrong side. Right. You're. It's away from the curb in the U.S. roads. That could be an issue if you have to stand there loading and unloading shit. Mm-hmm. Um, also, cab over van. Philly has awful roads. They're bumpy. They're fucked up. I love Philly. Their roads are trash. Mm-hmm. Straight garbage. A cab over a van where you're sitting literally above the front tires will accentuate bumpy roads and be a very bouncy ride. I like the idea of because it'll draw attention. It looks cool. It's interesting. My wife loves her Delica. We also use it as an airport shuttle here at WCCS. It's been very reliable. There, it's pretty tough, but like I probably wouldn't. Why don't you let Ryan come out and drive your car? If Ryan wants to come out and test drive my Again, Delica, he can. It's all about that, Ryan. If you can find one, if you can drive one, that will. Uh, that I will would. Help you. I would definitely drive one first. Uh, I've never driven a high ace though. Um, I don't know where you would drive one, but I, I don't even know what it is. That's the Toyota version of my Delica. That's okay. all it is. Now I know. Um, that's all I got, buddy. Tim McLaren says, "How do you and <clears throat> Zuckerman work out Plan Z?" <laughs> we don't. We don't really work it out. Yeah, it's always you different. break it, you bought it. Sometimes Zuckerman is offered cars, like the Touring was offered to Zuckerman, and he calls me up, and he goes, you, you want to be in on this? And I say yes, and I was able to secure these new cars when uh, Clearwater reached out and established a ra- relationship. And uh, we both are fortunate enough to have other cars, and we both uh, take care of our cars in the same way, yeah. and it's, uh, it's not hard. When we had Moise, our friend Moise, remember, we made him a, uh, we carved up a GT3 R, GT2 RS into thirds, and Moise does not respect cars, and Moise <laughs> uh, rips cars apart, but Moise is worth a lot of money. So we thought, well, whatever. That 
that was more difficult. Yeah. Because, you know, he would use the car for four days and come back and, oh, hey, look, the front bumper has a hole in it, and you <laughs> don't know how it happened. <clears throat> that's not, well, you, you, can, you, know, you, go, you can fix it. And I go, no, 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 that's not how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. With Zuckerman, like, I'll go, oh, you know, shit, something wrong with the wheels. I think it's probably me. Let me take care of it. I fix it. I get it ready. The car needs maintenance. When I have it, it's like a hot potato. I have yeah. it. I'm going to bring it in. If it's something big and it's going to cost a lot of money, I'll go, hey, you know, I paid for this. Uh, do you want to just send me half the money or not? And vice versa. We don't get too worked up about, you know, where it stays in my hangar, his hangar, and who pays for what, unless it's a big deal. Yeah. You like got to be like economically on the same level <clears throat> and also take care of cars in the same kind of in way. In the same way. And you also just have to be very, you know, Zuckerman's company, his law firm, um, with the new stuff, we just run it through his law firm. So that also helps, right? Mm -hmm. The company kind of owns it and leases it. And I can just, my, we, we pay him and he, you know. Yeah, it all it all kind of works out. But you got to be on equal footing with that kind of shit. Otherwise, you're going to cause some real problems. But having a podcast also helps. So when Zuckerman left the keys to the eighty seven nine eleven in his parking lot, and a meth head stole it, and then tuned <laughs> it around Hollywood for forty eight hours, you get content. He called me. Uh, you know, uh, I could tell he was nervous uh, about the bad news he had to deliver, and I just laughed. I said, "This is great. Yeah, let's go on the air and talk about this. This is awesome." Um, so, yeah. uh, uh, Joe, I'll bump your question to the next pro driver show as requested or the next crew show. Uh, <clears throat> Derek says, Spike, do you hate people named Thorn? Yes. What does that mean? Dad just, joke. Oh, it's a dad it's joke? It's funny, dad joke. It's true. Why? I Spike, Thorn, they both poke. I oh, I didn't even put that together. Oh, oh, wow. A dumbass. Um... And oh, also, is it just me, or has the new Integra been sh overshadowed <laughs> by the GR Corolla and Civic Type R? It's not the same. It's the same as a Civic Si, yeah. which is a much lesser car than a Type R or a GR Corolla. We have the GR Corolla downstairs, Ooh. which I recommend you okay. have a go in. I want to look at it. It's cool. We also have the new SL they just dropped off. We have three press cars right oh, now. Oh, let's look at it. The them. new SL they dropped off is bright yellow. <laughs> I don't know why they do Somebody that. Somebody at Mercedes is having a fucking laugh right now. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> it's really strange. Don't do that. Uh, Nathan says <clears throat> he wants you to tell me about the time your Tesla almost ran into a gate that it didn't detect. Yeah, nope. when I was uh, uh, in Palm Springs over Thanksgiving, I woke up to the Tesla full self-driving update uh -oh. on the Model Y uh -huh. and immediately put in the destination La Quinta X Skateboard Park with my son and his friend and said, let's see if the car drives us there. And it uh, it took us uh, out the street. We were in a little one of those little uh, gated uh, communities. Yeah. And uh, it took a right turn. It turned by itself. We're like, this is amazing. And then the light turned green on the other side of the gate, and it just went <laughs> to <did> not see <laughs> the gate. <laughs> it just like, I'm going to drive through the gate, said Tesla. But it, it was easy just to slow down and stop. Um, and then it started driving, took us up, uh, I would say, another couple of miles, left turns, right turns perfectly, stopping and, and, and uh, going, stopping sometimes, and then inching forward so the cameras could see just to make sure you know, it was safe to go, and it would say on the screen, it's moving forward. Uh, there's a very funny disclaimer that comes up when you get the update that says the car may do the exact wrong thing at the exact wrong time. Oh so <laughs> <laughs> it does. In, the, in one wow. of three disclaimers, it has that sentence. Oh, God. The wrong oh. thing at the wrong time. Um, and then it was at an intersection. The light was red. It took a right on red. It went to the next one, and there was a sign in the distance that said, no right in red. Tesla car didn't care. Tesla <laughs> car just went, I'm taking that right on red, and it did. So there were there were funny little things that didn't work with it. Most of it made me drive better in a place li like La Quinta, which is big, yeah, long Yeah, Palm blocks. Springs is big squares. Correct. Yeah. Um, so gates, speed bumps, it has trouble seeing. But I think it geofenced the ones on my street, so it did see those. Uh, roundabouts, forget it. <laughs> it's going to either quit or near my house it did something hilarious. It pulled in, it pulled up, it stopped, it signaled right, and then it went like this. Oh, it stopped again, it signaled left, and it went forward. And it stopped again, signaled left, and then signaled right. Yeah. 
So how so far it's, how it's, far ahead before the roundabout did it come to the stop when it did that? Did it give you notice or was it? You know how it, a roundabout will have a little yield line, which yeah. is a, a, an odd looking line, and it. At no point did I feel it was just being unsafe. What I thought is, oh, this is really going to inconvenience everybody behind me. <laughs> now, that said, I love it. I love driving this beta. I, I know you and I have argued about this in the past, but I really enjoy it, and I'm ex- um, excited to have it in the car. And it's still not really appropriate for Brentwood or or uh, Hollywood Hills or anything like that, but in bigger open spaces, I found it drove us very, very safely, safer than I was driving. So I have high hopes. It's not there yet. Yeah. And you do, uh, you know, uh, it does have this dis- this scary disclaimer. It's got three of them. Yeah. That if you don't get the message like, hey, keep your hands on the wheel, then that's your fault. And Well, everything that happens is your fault. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. According to the... Yes. The rules. Well, it doesn't matter what happens. That shit is your fault. But if you're doing it correctly, you'll turn it off and go, I don't want to babysit anymore. I want to drive. But more often than not out there, I was driving with it and, and preferred it. Uh, anonymity. How many more 911 models before Porsche decides the car is fast enough? I think about that all the time. I mean. I think about how fast is too fast. When are we going to stop? I, I don't think that'll ever I don't think they'll ever realize that. I think they'll just keep making them incrementally ever, faster and faster. You know, I don't – I think about that in the motorcycle world, right, yeah. that they kind of reached a place where these things were fast enough and now every year – then they year, kept going. <laughs> did they? Yeah. What motorcycle goes zero to 60 in a second? I mean, it's <laughs> limited at a certain point by traction, right? Right, right. But, right. I mean, I, I drove the Ramac Nevera and I ran an 8.5 quarter mile on the yeah. street. right. You know, you can you can run nines in a 911 Turbo S over but no, and over. No, we're talking about cars. I'm saying motorcycles. motorcycles. When, the, when the Hayabusa came out, we all were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you fucking for real? And that had 200 horsepower. Right. You can now buy, a du- buy certain Ducatis that are like 260 horsepower. Right. Like, they haven't stopped. Yeah. <laughs> They're not like... They, no, had but a, they, they had have... an agreement for a while with the Japanese companies. They were like, this is fast enough. Kind of like they did with the GTRs. Right. But I believe that kind of fell away because now uh, Kawasaki makes the H2, which yeah. is supercharged. And it's how much horsepower? Um, is it three? It starts with a three, doesn't it? I, I, I think the it. H2 might start with a three. I love that stuff. <laughs> You know, Tesla kind of staked a flag again with the the 1.9 seconds in the Tesla Model Plaid as yeah. kind of the new benchmark for what's considered really fast, yeah. right? Previously, we're in the middle twos, right? Maybe two three is a is a Porsche Turbo S, maybe, right? I think it's the the lower half of the twos. So uh, you know, that's to me, that's fast enough. Anything that could go two would probably be my personal line. It, you know, having been in the plaid before, it's fun for showing off once or twice, and then you gotta yeah. manage it with your driving. Do you really want to be holding on to something like that? You know, and and also, especially with electric cars, because I drove this the Ramac thing. When you are exploiting that to scare the shit mm-hmm. out of somebody or make them sick, it's very very impressive and nor- and gnarly. Right. But at 10% throttle, there's no difference between 200 <laughs> really? horsepower and 1,000 horsepower. <laughs> right. You know, it's not it's not more yeah. fun. It's just it's just you know, it's the same. Yeah. Um, and so I think I hope <laughs> that they focus on engagement and stuff like that. Um, I like balance. Yeah, me too. I, I crave balance in those cars. Yeah. You know, like the 991 Speedster. A friend, I, I borrowed Zuckerman's, and my neighbor has one. I just love how all of the elements of that car mm-hmm. work in concert. You can drive it slowly, you can drive it quickly, and you're happy, and yeah. the car feels like one. Yeah. Right? I, I, I'd, I'd be looking for that in this new 992 GT car that maybe that ST that I keep hearing about. I'd, I'd Same want something like that. Same thing with my like Boxer that. Spider. That car is awesome, even if you're oh, going those slow. Those are great cars. Yeah. Those are it's great super nice. cars. Like, if I were to recommend any car, if anybody wanted one car and you could afford a, uh, you know, a manual gearbox, uh, Porsche, mm-hmm. Spider. Yeah. Great Spider. Car. Yeah. You'll, you'll love it. It, it, you'll it is about as perfect, it. as perfect as those cars get. Yeah. And, yeah. and by Porsche standards, they are an excellent value. Yep. Because even, I mean, assuming it's sticker, even with a bunch of options, it's under 120 yeah, grand. Yeah. You're barely in a 992 of yeah. any gen. We just drove the Carrera T. 
which was very nice. Mm-hmm. Didn't like it as much as the one that you and I drove together. Right. But it was $147,000. That's not it was cool. was expensive. <laughs> it had a ton of shit in it. That's the old GT3 price. It was ex- <laughs> yeah, it was expensive. Really expensive. That makes no sense. Yeah. Well, it had, they, you know, it was a press car. They loaded it up with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to do that. But yeah. it, was, it was pricey. No, the loading up of stuff is getting more expensive. Yes, Having it is. Having looked over the little menu just this morning, I was mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. <laughs> And Lamborghini at the last press launch I went to said the quiet part out loud. Which and they is... said they're delivering cars in order of specification. Ah. So if you yeah. fucking load your Technica or whatever up right. or Oris up with a bunch of shit, yeah. your car comes first. Yep. That's mm. they I was like, did you did you say that out loud? You're not supposed to tell us that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, anonymity also over under that Porsche's alternative <clears throat> gasoline will be commercially viable. I don't. I think. I don't. I, I don't think it'll be coming from Porsche. Uh, I do believe that they will have some type of non-petroleum fuel. They bought a company that makes yeah, it, right? Yeah, and someone will figure that out because they're gonna they're gonna need a way to keep existing internal combustion engine cars running for a long time and we at the same thing in germany there were people who talked about alternative fuels and apparently it's very very easy to make internal combustion engines run on alternative fuels you just have to change Hmm. injectors and ecus and stuff like that so i think the odds are high odds are high i don't I, i won't give you a number but odds are high um oh boy oh rs1 daily question why is it okay to call a chevrolet a chevy to call a lamborghini a lambo to call a Mercedes-Benz a Merc or a Benz, but if you call a Porsche a Porsche, people throw fits. I think it's because you're mispronouncing someone's <laughs> name as opposed to a nick a nickname. Well, you're not really sure. Like if you don't, they, sure if you either. call it a porker, which some people yeah, do, that's they the don't nickname. get mad. That's the nickname. Right. But if you it's not like <clears throat> it's like it's like you they don't get mad if you call a Chevrolet a Chevy, but if you said Chevrolet Yes, that they people would probably say you're saying that Correct. wrong. They're mispronouncing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you say that's not how you say it, and they go, yeah. "What? No, that is." Yeah, and it doesn't mean that I don't once in a while say Porsche, but it's wrong. I don't. I don't say that. I have. I have caught myself saying Porsche. Well, they're both two like, syllables. I think yeah. that's, you're not shortening it like. But Chevy. the people who are saying it are surprised when you say that's not how the name is. Yes. If, if they were to say, "Oh, I'm just using the nickname," yeah. then you would say, "Sure." Uh, but I that by the way isn't just Porsches. Anytime anybody's mispronouncing anything, yeah, I get. I, I want to know if I'm doing it. That's just a writer thing. I used to get mad when people would correct me, but then I go, you know what? I get it. It's a guy's fucking name. Yeah, it's their, it's their name. Yeah, uh, Zuckerman was doing it for a long time. Really? Yeah, you of all people, Zuckerman. <laughs> I got. If you spend enough money, they let you say it however you fucking want. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave Kerwood, is your spike, is your skateboarding stance goofy or regular? Regular. Okay. I am a regular skateboarder, but I will admit to you, I was not pushing myself hard. I was at the skate park and uh, feeling my age and going, I don't, I'm going to do this a little bit. Uh, I haven't done it for a while, but I, I don't want to get hurt. So I did a couple laps with the kids on the pump track and then jumped off and just listened to the music. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to blow your Zuckerman money on, says Miles. Good your, question. Your, your, your I didn't get COVID to G. Zuckerman wants me to take him and Lieberman out to dinner. But that's not how it works. I know. You don't get to dictate that to yeah. me. He said, if you're a decent guy, you'll take us out to dinner. I'm like, really? But Lieberman uh, only- This is dependent on me being a decent guy, and uh, <laughs> I've never claimed that. <laughs> My wife tried to grab it this morning. I don't I don't quite know yet. I don't quite know, but it's going to be spent on something fun. And we're going to do the uh, handover on the next episode of the show, I guess, out at Bill's. You're going to be there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going to record a show out there, I think, if we can, on Sunday. And, and, and you'll witness the transfer of $2,000 and $100 bills. Yeah. Make sure and they're Zuckerman real. admitting he was you got wrong. The pen. You got to verify it. They're real. <laughs> Steal that from Bill. He's probably got one. Bill probably has one. Yeah, yeah. You got, we got to figure out what you're going to take from Bill's. Because you you're going to get to take something. Yeah. yeah. Someone actually claimed the sandwich menu board already. And I was like, damn, that's Isn't would he having good a big sale? Of, yeah, of yeah. Everything? But he said I could have some, I could oh, take that's something nice. gratis. I said, I want the fridge. Um, I got too much crap, you know? I, that's why the thing I'm I taking took the is memories. this big and goes I'm on the wall. I'm taking the memories. Um, we have a lot of questions, so I'm going to end These are the, the last four. Oh, okay, cool. 
Uh, Dan M., we already pretty much covered that one. Uh, David Zumod enjoyed the video that uh, we did, you and I, with the GT3 touring and 991 oh, yeah, that was T fun. last generation. Would we do another one? I would. I have to wait until the, they, the, the, the T just had the press launch, so we didn't have the car for very long. Right. I'll get it back for a few more days if you want to take out yeah. the GT3 touring okay. and the Carrera T again. Um, I enjoyed that video. I thought that was a very good comparison. I hear about actually. it all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, it was a good video. It was fun. Uh, Jack Riley, if you were to pick one question that you're often asked to never have to answer it again, what would it be? <laughs> so you're to pick one question that you're often asked to never answer again. So how'd you get started in this business? No, that's always <laughs> that's, fun. No, that's mine. I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, I don't get annoyed by whatever anybody wants to hear. That that's fine with me. People always will say, "I hate to ask you about the Seinfeld series, as it was forty years ago." But I, I don't mind answering anybody's questions. Okay, I, I think when people ask me questions that only Matt can answer, yeah, DM me that. I'm like, I I don't know. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Matt is an all seeing. Hey, what do you knowing, think Matt would think about this car? Like, I think you should DM him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stop asking me if I can get Jerry to Does, do your oh, stuff. Oh, there you go. That would be that would be the question for yeah, sure. That's a good one. I am not. I am his friend. I am not his agent. Yeah. I am not his manager. I am <laughs> yeah. not his decider. Yep. Don't don't ask me to do stuff for Jerry. That's a good one. I like that one. Uh, Light bias uh, says I put the Zuckerman <laughs> head sticker. On my laptop and I travel all throughout the country and I've had a bunch of people look at my laptop, look up and give me the nod. I feel like I'm in some kind of a secret club. My question is, what is the first rule of Zuckerman Club? It's a great question. You got to chisel. <laughs> Be a chiseler. <laughs> That's the first rule. Don't don't be nice to old ladies. Yeah. That's the other one. <laughs> they, they, they need to be tormented, especially in the supermarket. I Zuckerman an old lady in the supermarket, and I'm not proud of it. But she 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 upset me. Zuckerman really suffers no fools when it gets, especially old women. If someone will say something, an old woman will say, he gets triggered in a big way and That's goes so right funny. at him. I don't know if you've had this experience. When no, you know I've never him personally long witnessed enough, it. If you're ever confronted, you. In my head now, I think, why don't I respond like Zuckerman does? And I was in a Trader Joe's pushing my cart down the aisle, and by mistake, I hit an old woman. Like, I touched her like yeah. that with my cart. She was on her phone like this, twiddling, and I hit her. And I go, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, right? I hit her like this. Yeah. She goes, you should be sorry, <laughs> loud. Now everybody turns, you hit me. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> and I went, and I didn't control it. I was in a bad mood, and I zuckered her. I went, you know what, old lady? And I got in real close. Go fuck your mother. Like, like Zuckerman would have done. And she went, oh, my God. You're so rude. And there was a housewife uh, lady next to me who witnessed the whole thing. And she started laughing. And I knew. I was like, all right, I think I'm in the right. But I don't. Not. And I went home and I told my wife, boy, did I get in trouble. I got in the and she goes, you did what to an old? I go, she was way taller than me, Erica. And she, she was embarrassing me. In the Trader Joe's. <laughs> Erica came to me yesterday and said, the same thing that happened to you happened in the supermarket a minute ago. She came home from the supermarket. I go, what do you mean? She goes, this lady bumped into another lady and said she was sorry. And the lady screamed at her. <laughs> and I saw it. I go, I go, what is going on with the old ladies in the supermarket? Know, she goes, they're you really were, on edge right now. And she said, now. you were right. <laughs> I'm really on you. edge right now. No, I think that some old women go to supermarkets and feel like oh. this is my octagon. This is my, I feel comfortable <laughs> here. This is my place. And you were a guest. The lady who got yelled at yesterday That's was so taking funny. too long picking out her lettuce. Was it also a Trader Joe's? Is no, it, it was not. A Trader Joe's? No, 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 this is just a supermarket thing. But I think that's <laughs> their, the old ladies, this is where they like, this. they feel what like. what else do they have we, to like do? Like we feel at a car show, yeah. they feel in the supermarket. You yeah. gotta watch out for them. I wouldn't recommend doing what I did, by the way. But. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad at a car. I felt I when I the one day I drove my Boxster in Connecticut. Yeah. Larry detailed it, put the paint protection film, wow. the whole fucking shebang. Yep. He went balls to the wall in this thing. Go look at the video of it on the Ammo NYC channel. But I went there for one day. 
Yep. I said, I, have, I had one day with the car before I had to leave and the car was getting shipped out. So we took it to the New Canaan, Connecticut Cars and Coffee, which is a monster Cars and Coffee. And my sister brought out her kids and they're like one and three. Right. And the three-year-old like is obsessed with cars. Mm-hmm. And he wants to get in the car and press the buttons and I'm trying to be a good uncle. <clears throat> but he gets in the car, and as it turns out, he must have been fucking rolling around in a pile of dirt before of he got in the car. He's three, but just dirt <laughs> all over the car. <laughs> I made it about thirty seconds before being like, "You got to get him out of the car." You got to. I, 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 like, like a panic attack. Yeah, it's I'm hard. Like, I'm just. Wa- it's my car has like fifty four miles oh. on. It's just shoes just rubbing dirt yeah. all over the interior and Larry had just spent like weeks on this car mm. and I'm like oh my god Alexis get, get your uh, 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 get your kid out of the car I was like just I must have been bright fucking red yeah oh it was I was being such a horrible uncle like all he wanted to do was press the button and he's not even gonna remember it no <laughs> no <laughs> oh. you are traumatized the worst you have PTSD I he's not gonna get away I don't I, have kids I saw this guy well, I have cats are yeah. you gonna have kids no come on no you're married right yes yeah we have four cats it's great it's really good you know what we're thinking about instead of kids a yacht no uh <laughs> matt farah smoking tire <laughs> jr would be fantastic yeah right do the kids the kids show no it's not for me i don't think oh you'd love that's it okay yeah. see the fact that you love your cats that's the whole thing you'd love you know the what kids. they are quiet the kids the cats are nice and quiet <sighs> Every time I go somewhere where there's young kids, I go, yeah, this is not fun. Yeah, but they grow me. up, and then they're kind of cool to hang yeah, out they with. Keep look, look, we're that. riding motorcycles with them. I got, a, I got a niece and nephew. I get along with them. They're cool. That's good. That's fine. I'll be a great uncle. Mm-hmm. Every terrible thing that kid's going to do, I'm going to teach him how to do it. And then I have no responsibility. Back to Georgia for you. See you later. There you go. That's our show, kids. Spike, uh, thank you for coming down. See you on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it's for the uh, the Bills fa- farewell party. What do you think we should do as a format for the podcast there? It's uh, going like to be our, me. It's going to be you. Like our, our favorite memories <clears throat> or something. Or do we just talk? I, I don't just know. Just talk shit about people? I mean, that's what that porch, according <laughs> to Jerry, that porch is the best place in Los Angeles to judge people from. Really? He said that? In a fucking newspaper. <laughs> It's it's hanging up there. <laughs> he said it. He said it to a reporter. <laughs> well, you and I are going to be there. Johnny Lieberman, Zuckerman, uh, Jay's going to stop by. You know, I, I, I mean, guess I don't know. We can we just do a burn show. The place to the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I'll no, figure something. Don't out. Don't do that. Uh, but I wanted your professional advice. What do we you could, think? As I mean, a we could ask people. We could. We could. <clears throat> we could just have know, a little. Just, just their memories. Okay. We could order one of everything on the menu and have a tasting. <laughs> Start giving it away. Review his f- Review, food on the last <laughs> day his, for some reason. Yeah. No consequences. <laughs> He's out of here. <laughs> we should just go. We could go digging through the fridges and see yeah. what we find back there. Oh, that would be good. I don't know. But we'll be on the porch on Sunday. Sure. It would be a finger or two. <laughs> <laughs> Whose finger is that, Bill? And why is my fork greasy again? <laughs> At the start of my meal. (laughs) That's our show. We'll see you later. Bye.